What's up everyone? I have a jet black NSX today that is kind of mostly original paint um, and this is historically one of the most difficult cars to perform paint correction on. So uh, this car has incredibly soft paint. Honda back in the day was not really known for doing such great paint jobs. Uh, it's been through a few corrections. Um, apparently twice now it's been neglected under the wing. So if that goes to show you what a professional shop does, um, make sure you check who they are first. Can't believe they skipped all that when it was really easy to unbolt. <laughs> so we're gonna go over some strategies for correcting paint. So here is the paint here. I've already kind of gone over it once, but I'm gonna take you guys through the process here. Um, it's reasonably swirly. It's got some pitting. Um, it's basically 30 year old paint. This door is one of the original, is one of the panels with original paint on it. So we're gonna get it as good as we can for a 30 year old car. And there is only so good that you can get one of these, and sometimes old paint in general. So make sure you explain that to your customer, and for all you detailers who are having a, you know, dick swinging contest over there about paint correction, um, take a step back, because not every car can be perfect. So what I'm starting out here is I've got my Rupes 21 with a 5 inch backing plate on it and we have a Meguiar's microfiber pad and I'm using Shine Supply Classic Cut uh, which is a pretty good compound but not too aggressive. I'm on speed 3 and I'm just kind of moving at a medium speed here. Uh, because, although this is all going to stick to the paint, um, it's going to come out later when we polish it. So we're going to go through a few steps here. So when you're pricing one of these cars out please keep in mind that you may need to go through three or four stages of paint correction uh, and you're probably even though after watching this video you're probably still gonna have to do some test spots yourself anyway so uh, to get this to a acceptable finish swirl wise before we go over it with more uh, with less aggressive pads I had to do two passes with classic cut so I'm gonna go over it one more time uh, but this time I'm gonna do one drop of classic cut I'm going to spray a little bit of shine mist on there from shine supply also and then I'm going to go hit that spot again. Now I'm kind of experimenting in this video too so I was trying to see if, if we use a little bit less compound and some shine supply shine mist if it would wipe off more easily. I was wrong. So this is what really soft paint does. That's all compound. It's stuck there and you're like oh no what am I going to do? Uh, sometimes it can be wiped off with the help of liquid but uh, on a car like the NSX good luck. So it's not stuck there forever, don't worry, it's going to come out later when we final polish. Uh, but because this paint's so soft, using a regular Meguiar's uh, microfiber pad, I left you know, a decent amount of DA haze and probably some tick marks in there. So now I have a microfiber finishing pad from Meguiar's as well, uh, which we put a little bit of classic polish on from Shine Supply, and now which has a lot more abrasives in it actually than uh, classic cut. And I'm going to do a second step here to clear up some of the tick marks and stuff that are left behind by the Meguiar's pad or the, the regular microfiber pad. It is very rare that I have to break these out and I generally don't even really use them uh, until recently when I myself learned some new strategies and tricks as well. So this will be a helpful in-between stage here uh, to really get a nice finish once you do get to the final polish. So now that we've done that we're gonna wipe it off that one doesn't wipe off much more easily than uh, the classic cut did just because that pad is still kind of aggressive but it did wipe off a lot more than before. This is going to be one of those cars just really frustrating and when you touch it with a towel it scratches. So here's kind of in between now there's still some compound and there's some haze and some scratching but the surface compared to over here uh, is generally clear of swirls at least so now it's just going to be refining the finish so that we can really get the most out of this 30 year old paint. So we'll go now I, I've gone over the entire door with the microfiber finishing pad and didn't want to bore you guys with that on camera. So here's what everything looks like right now. There's a big hazy mess. I missed a spot right there. Correct for correction. I'll have to go back over that again. Um, yeah, this car is a nightmare. So uh, we figured out for this car, after a few different strategies, that the Griot's orange pad, uh, orange cutting pad, with like the tiniest drop 
of Shine Supply Classic Polish, very much broken down. We'll leave this with a pretty nice finish with minimal marring in the background um, and is with the best clarity. We tried so many things on this car and you really have to break down the polish, make sure you're running it clear, uh, that you've broken down all the abrasives uh, so you can get that extreme perfect finish. Not that it's going to be perfect. We probably got this thing to like 80%. <laughs> These are really hard cars, and I didn't feel as confident of a detailer until after we finished this one, and it came out pretty nice. I've only done two or three Jet Black NSXs in my life, and they are so hard to work on. The first one I definitely don't think came out as good as this one, so I was happy to see the, the results I got. So as you can see, the classic polish of the orange pad uh, wipes off much more easily and now that we're using a foam finishing pad sometimes a pad with a harder back like a, a foam cutting pad is actually better on soft paint and it'll leave behind a nicer finish and it'll clear up a lot more stuff it's really random and dependent on the paint system like i say you got to do some test spots so i did have to go over this twice as well i also saw some areas right along the edge of the body line right there that i wasn't very happy with uh, i had a lot of trouble reaching some of the DA haze and tick marks that were under there and I still didn't even get them out 100% uh, but I tried my best and we tried our every just about every strategy possible uh, and this was what would look the nicest there's one more thing we didn't include in this because uh, I didn't have time but if you're really struggling what you can do is you take a polish like Meguiar's 205 or classic polish or something water based and then you spritz your foam you use like a soft foam pad and you spritz it with water and then you spritz the paint with water and you play the tiniest drop of polish on it's basically water polishing it breaks down everything much quicker and sometimes it can leave a much nicer finish that's really old school uh, we did try that it worked kinda but this worked better so here is pre panel prep uh, as you can see, it's not 100% clear, but you saw how the paint looked earlier. There's still some marring right there along that edge. I just could not get out. Um, but overall, we were really happy with how this car came out. It's, it is incredibly difficult. And because what was most likely happening was explained to us is that the reason it's marring so bad is because this paint's so old that probably some of the clear coat is coming off and it's getting into the pad, which is leaving behind marring. And that honestly doesn't surprise me uh, because I've used to grind down cars you know so much to get that perfect finish when the pad gets all matted down and crazy usually that sometimes can be clear coat on there uh, when it has that like kind of glossy look to it so be careful with that um, and that could also affect doing one of these cars too you probably won't get this thing hundred percent perfect please don't shoot for that but make sure that you at least get all the polishing or all the polish off the car and that you're able to do that and that you're able to at least do like an alcohol wipe down or panel prep um, with fine lab like diluted without like freaking the paint out so as you can see we're we're still going here this car takes quite some time to break down all the polish on uh, especially using a five inch machine on such a slow speed so it's really you've really got to work it in and take your time final polish is usually more important than the compounding stage uh, because that's when you're really refining the finish working out any little tick marks or haze or anything like that so it's important to make sure that you also did your compounding step correctly as well and broke down all the product so here we are that looks really good for this car there's still some stuff there but again you can't get this thing perfect I don't know anyone who has a uh, hundred percent at least not in the last 15 years <laughs> well I don't have been detailing that long so in all the years I've been detailing I have yet to see someone crank one of these out perfect but I think that this is pretty freaking good and I was really satisfied with it so here we are the final result after we put some fine lab on here this is a car that you cannot just put any coating on uh, I have seen many struggle to get ceramic pro and other brands on here the paint is super finicky so make sure you have like a good coating or a light coating to put on here something that's not too hard to wipe off and that won't stick to this crazy paint thank you for watching if you have any questions uh, feel free to drop them below give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe see you next time